What's going on, guys? I wanted to hop on here and talk about CPR and the connection with airway management. And so one of the very first things we learned at the beginning of the class is airway management, supraglottic airways, specifically the eye gel. And so how do we connect the eye gel to CPR? At what stage within CPR are we inserting this eye gel, this supraglottic airway? And so if you move on up in healthcare and learn the skill of endotracheal intubation, direct laryngoscopy, all right, with, with a Mac blade, with a Miller blade, and you're inserting a tube directly into the trachea, um, this skill is going to be performed after the delivery of the first shock. Um, there shouldn't be any compressions going on because it's very difficult to visualize someone's vocal cords, which is what we have to see before we insert a tube into the trachea. But the skill that we all learned in our EMT class is the supraglottic airway, okay, where we don't have to visualize for the vocal cords. And so where in CPR should we be placing this? It's okay if compressions are going on. And so that being said, you arrive on scene, someone's unresponsive, you go through the motions, they're, they're apneic and they're pulseless, you initiate compressions and you tell your partner to go grab the AED and call for help. You're doing compressions, they arrive, they turn on the AED, and the AED says, shock advised, charging, uh, and you deliver a shock, and you're going to resume compressions. One of you, whoever just operated the AED, is not doing anything at this point. This is the moment where you should be inserting the eye gel. You should have checked it already, you should have lubed it up, and it's ready to go, and after or while that first provider is performing compressions, you should be attempting an insertion of that eye gel. And uh, after you insert it, obviously confirm placement, check for epigastric sounds, check for lung sounds, check for calorimetric device, check for improvement in pulse ox, improvement in skin parameters, check for condensation in the tube. Um, and after that, secure it down. Um, but your ratio your 30 to 2 ratio of CPR changes from 30 to 2 to continuous compressions. And when I say continuous compressions, that means you are going at, at a rate of 100 to 120 beats per minute at a depth of 2 inches, allowing for chest recoil, and you don't stop. You should rotate every 2 minutes or when you get winded. Um, and then whoever's ventilating, you're ventilating every 5 to 6 seconds now. You're not waiting um, for 30 compressions. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.